Hey Web World, Scotty D. Thanks for stopping by Interface Webcast. This is my pop filter. You've probably seen it in a couple other videos I have here on this channel. And a couple of you have even written me emails asking me, how did I make it? And why? So I wanted to put together this quick how-to video showing you how you can make your own pop filter if you want. Now, let's start off with the whys. Um, there are no shortage of pop filters out on the market. That's not the reason why. You can buy these things anywhere from $20 on up to well over $100, so cost really isn't the why. Um, the materials out on the market range anywhere from what you see here, round, with a material here in the center that's a mesh material, all the way up to full metal pop filters. And if you've never seen these, they look like a piece of metal Swiss cheese between you and the microphone, and that's supposed to break up the air pattern so you don't get that pop sound into the microphone. Um, if you know anything about metal, metal is resonating, and that's a bad thing inside of any recording environment, in my opinion, and probably anybody else that does recordings. So I'm not quite sure why they make those pop filters out there, and I've never used one for myself. It's only my first glance opinion over these things. If you've used a full metal pop filter, drop a comment below and let us know your experience. Otherwise, the round ones with a meshed material are very nice, and they are not that expensive, but the way that they're manufactured is that if anything goes wrong with that pop filter, you basically have to throw it away and go buy another one. More often than not, the thing that's gonna go wrong is right here. It's the meshed material. Is it gonna get ripped, torn, snagged, dirty? You know, you're breathing through this thing. How do you clean it, right? And if you had any of those issues where that material was damaged or you needed to replace it, these store manufactured pop filters don't really allow that. It's just not built that way. So I wanted to make my own pop filter that allowed me to replace not only the meshed material if I ever wanted to, but any other piece of the pop filter if anything went wrong and do it very inexpensively. So let's dive right in and show you how I did it. The first thing you're going to need is an embroidery hoop, a cross stitch hoop, a punch needle hoop, whatever your craft store calls it or has it labeled as is irrelevant. What you need to know is this is what it looks like. It's plastic and it comes in a variety of different colors and sizes. So you can really have some fun and be creative with this. Now, what I found is that the six inch embroidery hoop met my needs and it's about the same size as a manufactured pop filter. So I know it's going to give me plenty of real estate for that pop filter material to create that baffle between me and the microphone. And that pop filter material is hose, pantyhose, nylon stockings, whatever you call it. You can find this at most dollar stores. So this is going to be a very inexpensive part to the overall solution and they come in different colors too. I chose black. Next, you're gonna need a way to attach the hoop to your microphone stand and have it flexible enough to where you can move your pop filter around where you need it when you're recording. And what I found is that home Romex wire is perfect for this. It comes in a variety of different gauges and hardware stores will most likely sell this by the foot so you can get as little or as much as you need. I got about two feet and I still have leftover. Now you're going to need to attach that Romex wire to both the hoop and to your microphone stand. What you're going to need to do this is a zip tie and a hose clamp. The size of the zip tie and the size of the hose clamp will depend on your hoop that you buy and your microphone stand. What I needed was an 8 inch zip tie and about a 2 inch hose clamp. Last but not least, and certainly this is an optional piece to this build, is a split loom conduit flexible tube that you can place around your Romex wire. It makes it look a little bit nicer, and they do come in a variety of different colors, so again, you can have a lot of fun with this with your build. Now that you know what you need, let's put it together. I started my assembly by attaching my hose clamp to the microphone boom stand. And how I did that was I removed my microphone cradle that you see right here, and I was able to easily slide the hose clamp over the mount rod, and I tightened it up just a little bit so I can get it ready for the Romex wire. All right, now that the clamp is on your microphone stand or your boom stand, we're gonna focus on the embroidery ring and the nylon material which you can see here is one of the legs of the nylon stocking. Now you're gonna take a pair of scissors and cut off the toe area of one of the legs. Now get as close to the end as possible and be careful, don't cut yourself. You can take that little piece that you cut off and set it aside, you don't really need it anymore. And there's the inside 
of the leg of the stocking. Now go up to the upper leg area and cut it off the same. Now get as close to the top as possible because you will need as much material as you can get on this stocking. And what you kind of have here is a tube of nylon material. That's what you're left with. Now take your hand and slide it in to the material like this and that's to start to stretch the nylon material out because it's very resilient and it wants to snap back into its original shape and what you really need to do is start to relax this material out. Now take your scissors and cut a slit down one of the sides of the nylon tube that you've created here. Now be very careful and take your time on this. This cut has to be as straight as possible because you're going to be folding this material over in just a second. I'll show you that. So just be careful and take your time. All right, the cut's done. And what you have here and what you're left with is kind of a fillet of nylon, a nylon sheet, if you will. It seems relaxed, but trust me, you're still going to have to stretch it out a little bit. Now fold it over on itself and kind of straighten it out a little bit and start to stretch it out. Now be careful, as you can see here, it's wanting to snap back into place and you really need that to be an even fold on itself. And that's why I told you to make sure that the cut was nice and straight so your material is a, is a perfect fold on itself. Now start to stretch it out a little bit. Now this is where you're gonna need somebody to assist you with this next step because I did try to do this myself a couple of times and let me show you what happens here. If I stretch it out, and I'm kind of getting it ready for the inner ring of the embroidery hoop. Let me take that out here for you. Set the outer loop off to the side. Now, if I try to stretch out the nylon material, it's a double layer, and I try to stretch it out myself and kind of get it all the way around that, you can see it just kind of pops off. So have an assistant, somebody that can help you with the inner ring and the outer ring on this one step. What you're going to do is you're going to stretch it out against the table and have your assistant slide the inner ring of the embroidery hoop underneath the material. And make sure that the nylon fold completely covers the inner ring of the embroidery hoop, like this. And it's okay if it slips back a little bit, because now it's starting to relax and it'll stretch out a little bit easier. Have your assistant place the outer ring of the embroidery hoop on the inner ring and hold it in place very carefully against the table. And then just kind of snug up the embroidery hoop, the outer ring against the inner ring. And that's going to hold the nylon material in place, like so. And you can tighten down on it pretty good. Once you get it good, you can lift it up off the table and snug it down the rest of the way. And what you have here is the material is now in place, the front of the hoop, and here's the back of the hoop. Now, it looks ugly, so now you can take your scissors again and cut off the excess nylon material. And what I found works best is if you pull on the material just a little bit, it'll actually make a really nice, clean cut on the back end of the hoop. And again, take your time on this because, one, you don't want to cut yourself. Two, you don't want to cut the material on the ring itself that you're wanting to leave. If you do, you have to start this step all over again, and we all know nylon hosing only has two legs so you've got two chances to get it right or you've got to go out and buy more nylon stockings so again just take your time on it kind of pull back on it and just slide your scissors over it'll cut very easily doesn't take a lot of effort here and we're almost done and there we go right there oh, there we go and you can toss that excess material to the side. So you have the front of the hoop and the back of the hoop. And I just kind of use my hands and make sure it's nice and snug. Make sure it's not going to pop off. And again, screw the uh, bolt together very tight. And uh, what you have here is the front of your pop filter now. Now that you have the nylon hose attached to the hoop and you've cut off all the excess, you're going to want to attach the Romex wire to the hoop on the back side, not the front side. This is the front side, nice, neat, clean. The nylon is flush with the ring. The back side is the part where you cut off all of the excess nylon hosing. So back side, front side. Flip it over and lay it down. 
You're going to want to start the zip tie a little bit before you try to attach the uh, Romex wire. To do that, just go ahead and slip it in the appropriate way. Don't get your fingers caught in here. It's not very comfortable if you get your finger caught in a zip tie. Tighten down the zip tie just a little bit, enough to where you can get it over the uh, torque screw and bolt on the, uh, the ring. I get mine right about to there. And then I'm going to slip in the Romex wire like this. Now you can adjust this Romex wire uh, after you get the zip tie taut down a little bit, uh, but this will at least get it attached to the ring uh, to start with. So let's go ahead and tighten it down. And you can torque down on this pretty hard. What you're hoping to do is to get it to look something like that, where the zip tie is pretty tight. If I don't knock over the camera, it's pretty tight on there. Now, you can see the Romex wire is sticking out behind the nylon hosing. You can pull that back a little bit. As you can see, you can do that very easily. You can slide it in and out. Um, and you can adjust that as needed. Some people like to actually curl this piece back over the uh, the zip tie. It's your preference if you want to do that. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to attach this end to the microphone stand. Now you need to figure out the orientation of your um, pop filter. Either it's going to be upside down hanging like this, or it'll be right side up like this, depending on how you want the Romex wire to be sitting inside of it. Um, if this is a little bit loose for you, uh, you can get a different uh, zip tie, tighten it down, or um, find another method to attach it. Zip ties just work best for me. Uh, I'm going to come over the top like this, which keeps the bottom of my mic free of any um, any obstructions. Uh, so I'm going to go over the top and attach it back over here uh, to the boom. So I'm going to go ahead and start to bend the pop filter uh, how I need it. And I know that back here, once it gets to the boom, I'm going to need kind of a hard L on this Romex wire. And this stuff doesn't bend very easily, so uh, if you are going to need to bend it, get yourself some needle nose pliers and go ahead and start the bend using the needle nose pliers. It'll be a lot easier for you. Uh, so I've got mine kind of in a hard L like that. Coming over the top and slide that into the hose clamp. And then you can start to tighten down the hose clamp. Um, Definitely going to need a screwdriver for this uh, application, and uh, just be very careful so you don't pinch your fingers in this, and uh, don't stab yourself with your screwdriver. It's very easy to do that. If you've got a ratchet screwdriver, it makes life a little bit easier when you're doing this. Don't be too concerned about it laying on your cradle or anything, because this is a wire. You can adjust it afterwards. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and tighten this up. You can torque down on it pretty hard, it's pretty forgiving. Then kind of get your microphone pop filter where you want it. Lift this up a little bit. And then you take your little tubing here, it's a split tube, all the way down. As you can see there, hopefully you can. And you can slide this piece over your Romex wire. And there you have it, a homemade pop filter. Now that we've built the pop filter, let me show you the reason why you need to use a pop filter every single time you record. I'm gonna speak directly into the mic. Listen what happens. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Pretty extreme, right? 
Well, that's the pressure of the air as I speak hitting the diaphragm of the microphone. It's not good for the recording or the microphone. So let me get behind the pop filter and show you the difference. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Pretty nice, right? Now, why does that happen? Because the nylon layer breaks up the air pattern before it hits the diaphragm, giving you a much better recording experience. So there you have it. You can make your own pop filter. And it wasn't that hard, was it? You've seen it right here. And have the peace of mind that if you have to repair or replace any piece of your pop filter, you can do it yourself for pennies on the dollar. If you like this video, if you found it informative, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, please do so. And if you already are subscribed to this channel, thank you very much. We really do appreciate you being right there so we can be right here. If you have any questions or comments, comment below. If you have a question, drop us an email. Our email address is in the video description below. And tell all of your friends and family about Interface Webcast. Until next time, we'll see you, web world.